The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God most high, you are slow to anger and rich in compassion. Keep alive in us the memory of your mercy, that our angers may be calm and our resentments dispel. May we discover the forgiveness promised to those who forgive and become a people rich in mercy. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>
morning to everyone. And indeed, a warm welcome to our act of worship here today. Extend a special welcome to those who will be visiting in our midst, as well as to our online congregation, worshiping with us by our Facebook page. Today is the 16th Sunday after Pentecost, and our collect and our readings are for proper 19. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. Blessed be God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, Alleluia. And blessed be your kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all our desires are known, and from you most we expect it. Praise the cause of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Verse. 
Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when, he, when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to persevere a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord.
reading from the Word of God, written in the letter to the Romans, chapter 14, beginning at the first verse. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own law that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord, and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. <clears throat> While you pass judgment on your brother or sister, or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord.
should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children, and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him, and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay But he refused, then went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgive you all that debt, because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave, as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he could pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the Gospel of Christ.
strengthen them against the attacks of evil. And no matter how young they may be, we pray that they feel your love and that they would always seek to love you in all that they do. We make our prayer. 
through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I speak to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, I came to a conclusion after reading this morning's Gospel. And I'm going to share it with you. Now, I might change my mind on this in the future. Maybe even by the end of the sermon. But for now, I've come to the conclusion that the Gospel reading for today is probably the hardest one for many a Christian to hear digest, and certainly practice. Sometimes we half jokingly say it is hard to be a Christian. But today's gospel brings it into full view. Brings into full view how truly difficult it is. As we come face to face with the whole idea that forgiveness is a core part of the way of life of the Christian. Many have struggled and will struggle with this whole idea because the reality for some is that their experiences make it hard to forgive that person or those persons who hurt them in a serious way. The pain and the memories of past hurts are sometimes still ever present. And so, as we hear the message of forgiveness being read and preached, we might say, if you only knew what that person did, you would never expect them to forgive them. I will not pretend that forgiveness is easy. In many cases, it isn't. But walk with me through this reading, and maybe, just maybe, you can begin to find a way forward. Now this reading follows on from the one last week, which dealt with how to deal with conflict in the community. Today, we hear Peter asking the question, how many times are we supposed to forgive someone? And he throws out the number seven. On face value, seven sounds like a lot. And some of us might say, we give two chances the most, and that's it. <laughs> but Jesus takes Peter's suggestion to what can be seen as the extreme. And he says to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. With these words, Jesus is not talking about a mystical number. He is talking about the nature of forgiveness and the fact that it is to be limitless. To emphasize the point, Jesus tells a parable. And in this parable, you see a king wishing to settle his accounts. And before him is brought a slave who owes him 10,000 talents. This slave has no way to settle the amount, as it is an astronomical amount. And so the king orders that he, his family, and all his possessions be sold and paid and made. The distraught slave begs for the king's patience, saying that he will repay the amount. Looking on him with pity, the king decided to release him and forgive the debt. However, in the next scene of this drama, the forgiven slave sees a fellow slave who owed him a hundred denarii. And clearly, forgetting the mercy just shown to him, grabs that servant by the throat and demands that he repays the debt. His fellow slave does what he did with the king, and falls on his knees and begs for patience and time to repay. But his pleas were not met with mercy. And instead, the fellow slave was thrown into jail until he could pay the debt. Now let's give a little context. A denarius was approximately a day's wage. So the second slave owed the first one a hundred days' wages. A talent was approximately six thousand denarii. 
So a bit of math will tell us that the first slave owed the king 164,000 years of work. It was truly a figure that could never be repeated. Now, picture the king forgiving this incredible amount and the unmerciful slave being unwilling to forgive an amount that pales in comparison. On hearing of the lack of mercy shown by the one to whom he showed great mercy, the king has no choice but to reinstate the debt and the penalty. The message coming from Jesus in this story is that the members of the community are to treat one another as God has treated each one of them. As followers of Jesus, we have received, because of his great sacrifice, the remission of our debt of sin, a debt that we could never repay. We are being told, therefore, that we are to forgive as we have been forgiven. Daily and maybe even multiple times daily, as we pray the Lord's Prayer, we are reminded of this as we pray the words, forgive our sins, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Now imagine those words truly taken as we faithfully pray them. Forgive us our sins in proportion to the forgiveness we grant to those who have sinned against us. Let's say that again. Forgive us our sins in proportion to the forgiveness we grant to those who have sinned against us. Those words we pray take on a whole new light as we break them down in this way. And so we must ask ourselves, based on those words and where we are at this point on our journey, what level of forgiveness for ourselves are we asking of God as we prayerfully say to him, forgive us as we forgive those who sin against us. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as difficult as it is to hear, there is reciprocity in forgiveness. And so to have it, we also must give it. The story that Jesus tells us is that God's forgiveness surpasses what we either deserve or can comprehend. But it also tells us that while this may be so, it is contingent on our forgiving of others. So what does this mean for those Christians who struggle with forgiveness? Those who have experienced some type of trauma or injury at the hands of someone else and so struggle to forgive. The reality of life is that forgiveness is a journey. It does not always come easily or quickly. And it most certainly is not always a simple process. There are those whose trauma, whose wounds are so deep that forgiveness seems almost impossible. And for them, it is important to seek the help of a trained therapist, a counselor, to help in the process of healing. It may it may and in fact will take time because the journey of forgiveness may be long and difficult, but it is a journey that we must take as Christians. It is a journey for our own mental and physical sake, sake as the pain and the burden of bad experiences can have a negative effect on our mind and our body. But we must also do it for our soul's sake, as we continually seek to grow in the love of God. Indeed, the message.
message of forgiveness in this gospel is and probably will always be difficult to hear, especially based on where we are in our lives and our experiences. And while it is something that is required or even demanded of us as Christians, we know that it is a journey and it will take time. It will take the help of God to come to that point. And in some cases, the help of God is experienced through the bravery and the willingness to sit with a counselor to work through the pain that we have experienced. Yes, we are called to live lives where we practice forgiveness as we have been forgiven. But it is my prayer that as we recognize and not ignore this, we will see the healing that comes through the journey, albeit sometimes a slow and long journey of forgiveness. And never discount the power of God to shine light and to be light in the midst of our dark. In the face of the wounds, the pain, the memories of our past, I pray that we place our hands in the hands of our God, allowing Him to lift us up, give us strength, and create the opportunities for us to achieve healing. That someday, those negative experiences we had at the hands of others would no longer weigh us down or keep us in prison. But rather, whether up close or from a distance, we would grant forgiveness to those who have wronged us, even if they never admit their wrongs or never ask for forgiveness. Maybe all through the grace of God, grow to the point where we can forgive as our Heavenly Father has forgiven us. Amen. Amen. I just now to pray. And our prayer will be the singing of the hymn that we sign as a graduate. The hymn that says, Forgive our sins as we forgive. You taught us, Lord, to pray. But you alone and grant us grace to live the words we say. Forgive us, forgive our sins as we forgive.
Let us start with confidence and indeed with a sense of hope. Reaffirm our faith as we say in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and are unseen. We believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally God of the Father, God from our God, light from my heart. We are not to run to God, we are not to live. One in being with the Father, through Him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He was born of the Virgin Mary and not became man. For our sake, He was crucified on the conscious fire. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, He rose again. In fulfillment of the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and has seen on the behalf of no end. We can believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, on the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to God, trusting in His mercy for all who fall upon Him in faith. Guard the church from too much concern for the blessed things. Grant us peace to keep reverence and order, but to seek first the salvation of souls. Lord, be your mercy. May those who work in the world of finance be just and compassionate in their dealings. Give them wisdom and the grace to use their skills, not as an end, but for the welfare of all. Lord, in your mercy, give tolerance as we live and work with others. Since none can live to themselves alone, help us to care for our community. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. have mercy in all distress by the death, by death or financial work. Turn by your grace the hearts of those who oppress the poor and needy. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. have mercy in the last, and the greedy and unforgiving. Help us to forgive, that in the hour of death we may be forgiven. Lord, in your mercy, in the spirit of forgiving, as we trust to be forgiven, we offer these our prayers. Amen. remember in our prayers all those who are experiencing various stresses of life. Loving God, we pray today for those who are confronted by the sadness 
fear, some kind of fusion of stress and depression, and any other mental health challenge. And for those upon whom they depend for attention and for compassion and care. Look at mercy on all whose afflictions and challenges bring their weakness, distress, confusion, isolation. Provide for them homes of dignity and peace. Give to them understanding helpers, as well as the willingness to accept help. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. never miss the opportunity to give God thanks for his blessings and for the gift of life. And so indeed, if you are celebrating, giving God thanks for the gift of life as you celebrate your birthday, wedding anniversary, or any other anniversary or special moment in life, I invite you to come forward as we or our church family to join me in celebrating. Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days on this earth increase. We ask you to bless and to guide them wherever they may be. Give them strength when they stand. Comfort them when they are discouraged or they are sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, in the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, abide with them all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The act of penitence. Holy Scripture reminds us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of God the earth. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. To do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, follow according to his command. <laughs> sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation and this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, 
to the offer of our salvation. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us the divine and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you, and all persons in you, that God has sent us apart through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Journal, vent, 
to a trusted confidant or friend. Allow yourself to cry. Scream into a pillow. Get active. Go for a walk or run or attend Zumba classes. Meditate. Listen to music. Ask for help. These are healthy ways that we need to adapt and embrace. Remember, it's only one you and health and wholeness lies in our hands. And remember, we are mind, body, and spirit, and we want us all to be healthy and whole. Church cleanup day is coming up. There will be a church general cleanup day on Saturday the 30th of September starting at 8 a.m. And please notice, until the work is done. <laughs> please come out and assist as you are able. So we need all hands on the 30th of September. And then, congratulations in order this week for another of our young scholars. So this time, Brother Tejan Watts is congratulated on his for his academic accomplishments in the CSEC and GCE examinations. In 2021, he achieved a grade one in mathematics. That's when he was in year nine. In 2022, he achieved a grade one in electronic document preparation and management, and a grade two in English language B. In 2023, he achieved five grade ones in Integrated Science, Human and Social Biology, English Language, Theta Arts, and the Principles of Business, and three grade twos in Principles of Accounts, Caribbean History, and Information Technology. Tejan is currently pursuing his A levels at St. Ignatius Catholic School. <laughs> we wish him all the best. But let us not forget the parents, right? Take a bow, Brother Jerome. <laughs> I think we have another member as well, Kyle, from his face, so please do tell us Surprise, everybody! <laughs> That's actually my first line. That's actually my first line in the play. There is a play going on at the uh, Cayman Drama Society at the Prospect where I was holding in Red Lake. It is called Beef No Chicken. Yes? Beef No Chicken. I'm not going to tell the whole story. The play was written by um, the great Sir Derek Walcott. For all of those who, who know, great play writer um, and writer itself. He was born in St. Lucia, but I'm sure many Trinidadians will accept him as Trinidadian. You know, that's where his family resides at the moment. Um, there are three of us from Trinidad. There's our brother, brother Mikhail Campbell. Uh, we have a backstage crew, um, Angus. I know it's going to be a surprise, I won't give that away as well. But those of you who have seen the play, and I am looking around and I've seen some persons, yes, uh, you will admit that it is absolutely 100% hilarious. You will laugh a lot, 
and I add that to the Mother's Union Challenge for September, laughing, laughing with Henry to, you know, get to it off. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I do have a fairly major role, I'm, and there are only three shows left. That's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday coming. I can tell you that Friday and Saturday is pretty sold out. Thursday is getting there as well. And the tickets are have to be bought online, or it's best to buy purchase them online through the website. And they are thirty dollars, but you know that's just a little chump change to come and see your own brothers uh, performing and, and having fun and releasing some of those stress as well. So it's called Beef No Chicken Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It's your last chance to see us perform. It is a comedy; you will laugh, and it is filled with lots of fun. Uh, uh, Sister Rhea says to give away a little bit. Come and see me get beat down, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it gets a lot better after that. So thank you, I'm looking forward to seeing you all on the weekend. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Gerald, for sharing. I'm sure uh, many others will come up and see. Uh, but you can speak to Sister Rhea afterwards about the, um, the cost of the act. <laughs> All right, well that brings us to the to the end of our notices. Thank you very much once again, Sister Cuddy. Uh, the all that is left for me to say is that our recessional hymn says to us, "Forth in the peace of Christ we go." <laughs> Safe, reflective, enjoyable day to everyone. Thank you.